And just like that, we are back in Arizona. Doing a little urban boondocking, a little casino camping. This is the Desert Diamond Casino. We're in their parking lot. Got the solar panels out, getting a little, a little extra juice here in the afternoon for the batteries for tonight. Uh, yes, uh, that my spare is not there. We didn't get a flat, but we did get a nail in one of the other tires in this tire. And it was dropping air every night, so in the morning it'd almost be flat. So I went ahead and pulled it, put the spare on, and have ordered a new Maxxis tire. So I'm getting to replace another tire with Maxxis. And I know a bunch of you have been asking, what about Texas tire trouble? So we <clears throat> have not solved the problem yet of the weird tire wear. Now that's the new tire there. And you should be able to see there's really no wear. No odd wear, at least. So we're not quite sure what was going on there. It's very possible it was just a bad tire. Because there's a lot of friction on those outside edges of a tire on a trailer like this because the corners you're going around. So it might just have been a bad tire and it was just war funny. Uh, I don't know. We're still kind of, the jury is still out. Not quite sure what happened there. But we'll figure something out. And I was, Jenna was getting a little sun earlier today because it's beautiful. It's about 80 degrees here. And the trailer needs a bath. But the truck luckily got a great bath. Got it all cleaned up. It's black again. <laughs> Instead of gray. Here's a lot of road grime. Anyway, so this is um, the Desert Diamond Casino. Just outside of Green Valley and just south of Tucson. And we're excited to be here because we're going to go see the uh, Titan Missile Museum. And then Tucson's got the... Um, Sabino Canyon, we're going to go check out that. You see a couple other RVs here in the parking lot. And a big truck came in a little bit ago. And then that is Desert Diamond Casino. We haven't been over there yet. We've got to go check out, see if they got a buffet. Because you know us and buffets. That's our nearest neighbor here. But it's awesome because we have like our own little, our own little cactus garden right here. It's beautiful. All right, so tomorrow is the Titan Missile Museum and then Sabino Canyon and who knows what else. But we're happy to be back in the warmth of Arizona. Lots of sunshine, lots of solar. That is just too cool. You know, it's kind of a radio nut. I love to see these big old antennas like that. This is an old... HF radio antenna uh, I'm guessing the 50s and 60s that's really cool though you don't see those anymore it's all satellite That's cool. I like the Going down.
20 minutes of our time in here. And I need a lady volunteer. You want to volunteer? You get a free chair. Sure. Okay. You have a nice, comfortable chair there. Do me a favor, don't touch anything until I tell you you can, okay? We have, okay. Captain Jenna is our missile combat crew commander. She's in charge of the operation here. She uses this console like the dashboard of a car. It gives her an overview of the whole operation, like your car's dashboard gives you an overview of your car's operation. And like your car's dashboard, there are a lot of idiot lights up here. Those lights indicate status, change, warnings. Uh, when it was set for an air burst, like targets one and three are here, it would detonate at 14,000 feet above the earth and totally wipe out 900 square miles of terra firma. That means it would take out a city the size of Tucson or Phoenix, and a single weapon could do that. Uh, it was a devastating weapon. Set for a ground burst like Target 2, it would detonate at the earth and carve a hole in the ground 400 to 500 feet deep, a half to three quarters of a mile wide, and vaporize everything in that hole. That was used to attack hardened underground command and control complexes maybe a missile site built like this one. The two keys are over seven feet apart. They're spring-loaded to the off position. They have to be turned within two seconds of each other, held on for five seconds in order to launch Titan II. So it takes two people working in concert to launch the weapon. Commander, I see it's time to launch our weapon of mass destruction. If you'll put your left hand on the key, tell me three, two, one, turn. When you say turn, turn it all the way to the right and hold it. I'll do the same thing. Okay, three. Two, one. Turn, hold, five, four, three, two, one. Release. You can sit back and relax. You have done your job. There is no big red oops button up here. There's no <laughs> I didn't mean to do that switch. Once you turn those keys, it's like pulling the trigger on a rifle. There is nothing you can do to stop this. The first green light that comes on indicates the butterfly valve lock code is correct, among other things. The first white light tells us that we have two 28 volt dry charge batteries on the missile getting electrolyte forced into them for the first time. In 28 seconds, those batteries will be up to full power. We get the third light. The missile doesn't need us for electricity anymore. That silo door is rolling back and it breaks those tipsy beams topside. We have silo soft. The guidance go. The guidance is talking to the missile for the very last time. Water is flowing below the engines. The propellants come together. We get fires in the silo indicated by red lights and loud clacking. The engines have started and five seconds later we have liftoff. The missile is gone. From key turn to liftoff, it's only 58 seconds. Now that missile is going to fly up to 6,500 miles over the North Pole and Target 2 will cease to exist.
can't believe what they went through to protect the missile from sh shock and, and vibration and all that. That's phenomenal. These are all suspension. Yeah. Up and down. Yep. Springs. Suspension. 